Hey, just a quick update. After I recorded this podcast about how to turn your passion for treasure hunting at thrift stores, yard sales, flea markets, and online sites like OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace into a profitable reselling business, Rob and Melissa told me about their new online university where they walk people through setting up their own flipping business and they answer any questions you have along the way too. So I arranged for you to get $100 off their online university. But in order to get this deal, you have to go to a special address. It's fleamarketflipper.com slash Kim. That's fleamarketflipper.com slash Kim. And here's the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Commando on Demand Insider with Kim Commando, your fast-paced weekly update straight from Kim's desk to your ears. I'm Mike James, and today you're going to hear from the flea market flippers. Kim introduces you to a couple of folks that are making a lot of money, six-figure income, using garage sales, flea markets, Craigslist, and finding used products, then cleaning them up, doing what they need to do, and then selling them for a nice size profit. So it's all about how to do this and how to get started. And just a quick reminder, this is not the Kim Commando Show on over 400 radio stations nationwide. The podcast version of that show is available, and you can try it out for free right now by using promo code KIM at getkim.com. Again, you can listen to all three hours of the nationally syndicated Kim Commando Show at getkim.com and use promo code KIM to get your free 30-day trial. Okay, so what does it take to make money buying and selling products on places like Craigslist and eBay and flea markets? We've got the flea market flippers for you next on Commando On Demand Insider. As U.S. unemployment claims soar over 40 million, a lot of people are struggling and just trying to make ends meet. But at the same time, it's amazing. Online shopping and services like Instacart, they're just surging because, let's just face it, people are still afraid to go out to the stores because of COVID-19. And you also have a lot of people like me who've had a lot of time on their hands. I've cleaned out a lot of closets, and I'm finding things that I just don't need anymore, and I've actually started selling them online. So when I ran across a story about a Florida couple who flip for a living, I knew that you'd want to know more about how they do this because they're earning a six-figure income. Rob and Melissa Stevenson are the brains and muscle behind the popular blog and website Flea Market Flipper, and they're joining us here on this podcast to tell us exactly how it happens, the secrets behind it, and also how you can get involved too. So Rob and Melissa, thanks so much for joining us. Um, let me ask you the f- the first question is what's the strangest thing that you've ever flipped? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, um, thanks for having us, Kim, for sure. Um, the strangest thing we have ever flipped is probably a prosthetic leg um, that we actually picked up at our local flea market, and then we uh, we brought it home. We sold it on eBay within a couple hours. Um, we paid thirty five dollars for it at the flea market, and then we sold it for a thousand dollars on eBay. You know, that's a great profit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I thought they had to be like custom fitted. Yeah, this one was actually the the knee joint is what it was. Um, so it was they have custom fits that actually fit up over the leg itself. But this was the prosthetic knee joint portion of it, um, and it was titanium. So if they make them to where you can interchange fittings from the top and down by the foot, so you can change that stuff out for different things. So when I say leg. Um, it's not just like a, a prosthetic leg that you would see somebody. It was a, a physical knee joint, and it was actually electric. Um, you could plug it in. Yeah, you could plug it in. You could ch- uh, charge it and do different things. I didn't have any of the components with it. All I had was the actual uh, knee joint. That was what was was um, um, that. That was what I purchased at the flea market. It's so. So, do you guys go like to flea markets every weekend? I mean, how are you finding stuff now? Yeah, we absolutely love the flea market. That's uh, that. Well, I do. Um, I'm there more than Melissa. But yeah, um, that is where I started was the flea market. Um, now there's so many apps out there, reselling apps that you can find great deals. Um, and then contacts that I've made throughout the last probably four or five years. Um, when we started taking this as a full time profession. Um, yeah, I started making some good contacts. And those the guys that I have actually uh, email me stuff during the week, um, and then I can buy stuff from them. So there's all different places that you're able to find awesome things to flip. So when did you start flipping? And and did you do this as a couple? Um, I've been doing it for over 20 years. I started um, when I was 16. 
Um, I come from a bigger family. Um, I have six older sisters. I'm the youngest and only boy. Um, having a big family, my parents went to yard sales. They went to thrift stores as we grew up. Um, and they also did this when I was younger. They would buy commercial equipment um, anytime they saw it at a yard sale or a thrift store. And then they would sell it in the classified ad. This was way before eBay. Um, so I kind of watched them model um, this, this, I guess, this, a blueprint. And then I slowly did it from the age of 16, probably up until we went full time um, five years ago, um, which would have put me at 35. Um, so yeah, for, for almost 20 years, the better part of 20 years, I, um, I, I did it on and off, but I never realized the potential of going full time um, until we were thrown into it about five years ago. And I married into it. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Melissa, so so did you know this going into the game that one day you guys would be making money flipping prosthetic legs and whatever else you could find? No, I had no idea. Um, when we first met, uh, he had dabbled a little bit in flipping houses too, um, but he really liked the more of the items and stuff. And I remember when we were dating, I tried to explain to my mom what he did to make money. And, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really understand it. And so it was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I love it now. That would be funny to say, okay, mom. So I met this great guy. He's, he's amazing. And he loves me and oh, so great. That's so sweet, honey. What does he do for a living? Well, he goes to flea markets and junkyards and he buys things and sells them to make money. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) That would be, it would be a little strange. Okay, so so you started this uh, full time job how many years ago? It's a little over four years ago now, because our our youngest uh, kid is four, four. He just turned four in March, so it was right when he was born. And so now, are you both flipping? And the, our our business is really two parts. So um, the flipping portion, we still do that. We've been doing that, like I said. Um, full time, we've been doing it for a little over four years. Um, but our other portion of our business is actually the online, uh, where we've created a course to teach other people how to make an income, a side income or a full income off of this business. Melissa does more of the online stuff. So she does the behind scenes for websites, blog posts, um, that kind of stuff. And then I'm, uh, she's pretty much the brains and I'm the broad. So I'm still out lifting stuff. Uh, finding stuff, flipping stuff, and it's content for our blog. Um, and then she's actually doing the back end stuff online. So that's what she pretty much handles. You know, it's a, you know what? It's a great thing because I've always told everybody, I mean, if you can have your spouse as your business partner and it works, then it's it's truly a partnership because you always know that that other person has your best interest. And hopefully, you know, they're not going to steal from you, right? <laughs> So uh, the only challenge that I find in running a business, my husband, is that when you're together 24 seven, it's like, I need a break every once in a while. Right. Yes. Yeah. We, uh, um, we, we definitely had to learn how to work together because we both used to have jobs where we would go away for a while and come back. And now we're, we're together all the time, but, um, but yeah, it's, a, it's, it's been a learning good. process for sure, but we have worked past it. And yeah, now it's amazing. It's uh, we have a great relationship working. All right. So let's talk about the nitty gritty. Okay. So you have these websites, offer up, let go, Facebook marketplace, of course, eBay and Craigslist. Um, do you actually find good things to flip on those websites? Yes, we all the time. I mean, you, even if you only concentrated on one of those uh, uh, websites, um, you can find amazing stuff on any of those venues. Um, the, the two that I use the most are offer up and Facebook Marketplace, um, but you just kind of have, have to think of it as people who don't want to give away the items a lot of times, or if an item is not, um, they don't use it anymore, or if it doesn't work. So I'll buy some stuff at an amazing deal if it needs something small, um, and then I'll try and figure out how to fix it uh, myself. Um, that's usually when you can find the best deals, but uh, you also can just find uh, amazing deals of people that are moving and have to get rid of stuff, uh, kind of like moving sales, but now they do them online apps because you can list and sell stuff anytime. It has, doesn't have to be limited to a weekend. Um, so yeah, that's I, there are amazing deals to be find, found out there all over the place. And most people won't ship the bigger items. So that also uh, plays a big part in they can't sell it for as much because there's not as many people looking at the item. Yes, that's true. I've seen like things for sale at nextdoor.com. Have you checked that out as well? We have, I have not used Nextdoor that much. Um, the, like I said, the, the two that I like the best are OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace because in our areas, they seem like there are 
so many users on there and they are flooded every single day with amazing deals that you can look through and find some good deals. He doesn't need another app to go through. <laughs> yeah, one more app. Um, how about FreeCycle? Have you checked them out? No. I, I, I have an account with them and I check them out uh, periodically. They, they, there is a, a bunch of good stuff that comes across there. Um, but Rob's the one who is more app to go get stuff. So, and, yeah. Yeah. There, even all these other apps that we're talking about, they also have free portions. People will list stuff for free. Um, a couple months ago, I went and got a, a soft serve ice cream machine um, from a lady who purchased it. It was three phase instead of a single phase unit. And she couldn't get it in. She couldn't get the electric to her ice cream shop. So she was giving them the machine away. There's absolutely nothing wrong, nothing wrong with it. So I went up there and I picked it up and it is like a $20,000 machine. I'm sure she didn't wow. pay that for it because she bought it secondhand, but I got it for free and I have it listed. I haven't sold that one yet because that's a specialty one, um, but I have it listed for $10,000 right now and I didn't pay anything for it. It was on OfferUp or Facebook. I don't remember. It was OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace just for a free listing that if you watch and you're on top of that stuff, you can get some awesome things for even free. So I read a story about the mattress. You went to go pick up a mattress and then that turned into a whole nother side business. Tell us that story. <laughs> yeah, I, I found a sleep number mattress. Um, it was on Craigslist. Um, I've done sleep number mattresses before because you can break the mattress all the way down into, I think it's like 10 or 15 different pieces. It's got the, uh, the blow up um, insert inside of it. It's got all the foam and then just the covers, the top cover, the bottom cover. So, excuse me, I've done them in the past and I found this one on Craigslist. So I went to look at it. It was at a hotel is where I found it. Uh, well, when I went to get there, when I went to the address, it was a hotel. The, the gentleman who was selling it took me into a room and there were 10 of the mattresses, 10 of these sleep number mattresses in this hotel. So he told me, pick whichever one I wanted. It was, I believe they were like $200. He was either 175 or $200. Um, so I picked out the best one that I could, the least amount of stains on it. I knew that I could wash it, get it cleaned, um, get it sterilized, all that stuff before we sold it. Um, I purchased that mattress. I was on my way home and I ended up calling the guy back, asking him how much he would take if I took all the mattresses. Um, and he called, I mean, he said he had, had to go count and see how many he had. I figured he only had 10 cause they were in this room. He had a whole like storage full of these mattresses. It was 60 mattresses total. And he told me he would sell me all of them. And if I took all of them, king size mattresses, he would sell them all to me for $60 a piece. So 3,600 bucks for all 60. Um, and I ended up doing the deal. I split it up um, into a couple of different months. Uh, he said he was cycling them out of the hotel and he couldn't get rid of all 60 at one time. But if I made a deal with him, I think it was every month and a half, I could come and pick up an, uh, another 20 of them. And then he would cycle the, the hotel out. We ended up making, in the beginning, we sold them whole mattresses, anywhere from, it was five to $600. Uh, we sold those for five to $600 after we cleaned them. They looked great. Uh, and then we ended up parting them out for probably the second bunch that we did. And we were making closer to $1,000 or $1,100 by selling the parts versus selling them as a, a whole mattress. So all together, we made over $25,000 on this deal with this match, these mattresses that we bought. Hey, don't forget, if you've got a question about something digital, you can get Kim's unbiased advice. And it's advice that you can trust. America's Digital Pro, Kim Commando, and our nationally syndicated radio show. You just go to commander.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, click on the Be a Caller button. We're going to ask you your name and for a couple of details about your question. And then Manny will get in touch with you. We'll set up a time where you can be on the show, ask your question on the show. It is fun. You can call your friends and let them know that you're going to be on the show. And that's, again... The Be A Caller button in the upper right at commando.com. All right, you're listening to Melissa and Rob Stephenson of Winter Garden, Florida, and it's the flea market flippers. And coming up next, when things don't go as planned when you're flipping products like this, and how has everything changed during the pandemic? You may be surprised on that answer. And what about shipping these products? Do they pay for shipping or does the customer pay for shipping? How does that work? It's all coming up next on Commando on Demand Insider. Welcome back to Commando on Demand Insider. And here now it's more of Kim's conversation with the flea market flippers. And I'm sure like not every find has been such a success 
Have you had any like major losers that taught you a lesson? Yes, I have. Uh, one that I think about was last year. We bought a inflatable boat from one of my contacts, from one of my flea market contacts. This was brand new in the package. Uh, I think it weighed about 100 pounds. It was an inflatable dinghy uh, that you pull out of a, a package. You blow it up. You put a little motor on the back of it for um, for like in the in the ocean or for in the lakes, whatever. It was brand new, still in the package, never opened up. I bought it uh, pretty much sight unseen. I didn't want to pull it out and do anything with it. I bought it. Uh, when I got it back to the house and started pulled it out and take pictures of it, some of the seams in the inflatable boat, it's a rubber boat, had come unglued, uh, and I was pretty much screwed. I just spent, I think I paid, a, do you remember what it was? $180. $180 is what I spent on it because uh, I did the comps on it, so I looked, checked it before I bought it. Uh, they were they were worth like retail on them was like over twenty five hundred dollars. So I was thinking this was going to be a home run. Then when I got into the house to take pictures, the the uh, seams were coming un, unglued, and I didn't know how to fix that. So I ended up having to sell it, and I broke even on that. I think I ended up selling it for one hundred one hundred eighty or two hundred dollars. But I sold it as is to somebody who knew how to repair it. So and that's happened a number of times where not everything is a home run. It just kind of. Uh, tells you in the future, told me in the future, I need to take a little bit more time when I'm buying something. Instead of only doing the research of where the retail is, what the comps are for it, uh, do a little bit more research on, I mean, just checking the item over to make sure it's in really good condition or it's in the condition that you're assuming it is before you actually buy it. You know, that's all great advice. Now with everybody home because of the pandemic, has it changed your business? Have you had to pivot any our business actually has uh, grown during the pandemic because more people were at home shopping online. So we actually had um, higher sales during the whole quarantine. Um, even that first week, like exercise uh, equipment was hot for sure. It still is, but like there's a, a lot of stuff. People were just shopping from home. Um, and as far as sourcing, I mean, we already have a whole bunch of inventory, so we just were listing it. But um, he was, you were still going out, and, yeah. or he was still going out and finding stuff, but being safe about it and just like on uh, offer up and Facebook Marketplace because all the other places were closed. Yeah. Um, it, but, did, it did affect our sourcing at the flea markets, yeah. our flea markets, thrift okay. stores, all that stuff closed down. But the cool thing about it is people are still trying to liquidate stuff that they had yeah. to create cash. So there were still deals out there that were on all the local apps. Um, then people were not scared to meet with you. I mean, you would meet up with them somewhere. Uh, they, I mean, you cut contact, you'd wash your hands and that kind of stuff. So we still were finding amazing deals. And I think the first, uh, it was the first four or five days after they quarantine or they, they put the order in that you were not supposed to do anything. We ended up making on sales, like over 80, 80, 80, 80 yeah, $8,800, $8, somewhere around there between eight, $9,000 in sales, which was amazing. I mean, it was a huge pickup because people were at home looking on their phone on eBay, trying to find some cool stuff. Um, and yeah, it was just amazing. It was amazing that our business actually picked up during this time of crisis. You know, you mentioned something about shipping and that a lot of people, you know, they expect you to come pick it up and then, you know, maybe they're in Des Moines and all this is happening in Orlando or what have you. And then you've actually added some options, which I think is so super smart because, I've actually, you taught me that myself when I was reading your story because I'm trying to sell a Corvette, uh, a classic car, and the guy's in San Diego. And so he was saying, you know, and I finally said to him, you know what, I'll just, I'll have it delivered to you in San Diego. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yes, we can make that happen. Um, so tell us about the shipping angle. Yeah, shipping is huge in the business. And that's where it comes into finding deals in your local market. And then offering them to a, a bigger market, you know, nationwide or even global. Uh, eBay has a, a, a global uh, shipping uh, partner that they they actually will do all the, the paperwork and all the um, exporting and all that kind of stuff through their global program. So I just sold last week, I sold some polar watches uh, that went over, where did it go? Malaysia? I don't know. It went somewhere overseas, so it went to their global hub here in Kentucky in the States, and then they took care of all the paperwork and got it sent out to the eBay member uh, who purchased it. So shipping is huge. If you're willing to offer shipping, it just opens up so much, so many more people who are looking for that item all over you know, the States or even the world. You might find people and that are willing to pay the uh, the real value of the item. We, you know, We never charge over retail. We're usually at 50% of retail when we're selling used items, but still versus the limited market of your local uh, apps and venues, the when you go to a, a, 
a nationwide or even worldwide uh, um, a platform. It's just it, you just have so much more of a chance to be able to sell it for a higher profit and get it to those people. You know, I don't know if it's popping up in your part of the country, but in in Phoenix, it seems like every weekend they have these so-called estate sales where it really looks like they're staging a house to sell furniture or what have you. Do you find anything in those places? Yeah, we don't do a lot of estate sales ourselves. There is an auction in Orlando that deals with um, all the remains of estate sales. They, the, I guess the estate companies, they give it to this auction house, and then they auction it off. And we found some amazing deals at that auction house. As for estate sales, I don't like... We don't I, do them that much, but I enjoy them yeah. when we do do them because you can find some good stuff because the company is coming in. They don't have any attachment to the items. They're just trying to make their money. So you're not dealing with like an owner who's attached to an item. Um, so the prices are typically pretty good. They're just trying to get rid of everything. And especially on the last day when they yeah. have to get rid of that stuff in the estate, they will knock down the prices and you'll be able to either pick up stuff for free because they have to get rid of it if you're there the last hour of the sale or they'll knock the prices cut them in half and you can even get better deals at estate sales boy that's a great tip right there um what about the like the government and the the tax seized auctions anything there um we don't typically mess with those uh there is another auction house here uh outside of orlando that does all of the schools like the school systems that when they um, they redo their kitchens. They get rid of all their ovens or um, all, all the all the stuff that they all they the exactly even gym equipment stuff like that. It goes to this one at auction house, and they have amazing deals at that auction house that I bought. I, I can't tell you how many things I bought from that auction house from the local uh, counties around us um, that are sort. I mean that they're replacing uh, whatever it is in their in their businesses. They're replacing that stuff. And then they're just giving this stuff to the auction house to sell for whatever they can get for it. And we found amazing deals at those kind of auction houses. Then when you sell something, do you do a bill of sale that says like there's no warranty, no guarantee, or is that just understood? Yeah. For used item, it's pretty much understood, but we do our terms and conditions with eBay um, that we write up the terms and conditions that we, we say, you know, a lot of our stuff, we tell where it comes from and that it's not our personal item. So people understand I'm giving them the best. I've tested it the best that I can. If I sell, I'm a, everything that I sell is as is. Uh, so because it's a used item, I don't know if it can break tomorrow. I don't know if it can break, you know, if something can happen to it in a year. I have no idea. So I don't make any claims to that. I just do my best to take all the pictures I can of the item so that people understand the condition that it's in. And then as well, I list, this is what, this is what I was able to do to test the item. Please expect this is the item that you're going to get. If you love the digital lifestyle and love keeping up with all the breaking tech news and security alerts and data breaches so you can tell your friends and family kind of what's going on and what to watch out for, we've got you covered with the Commando newsletters. They keep you right up to date, and you can get yours at commando.com, which is K-O-M-A-N-D-O. And on the top, click on the Get the Newsletter button, and it's a double opt-in. So we'll send you an email to make sure that you want the newsletters, and then you got it. We've got also specialty newsletters about Apple and Android Many, many others, including The Current, which is just what it says. It keeps you up to date on what's going on, and there is no advertising in The Current. It is read it just as you get it. And again, that's at commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. Try it out and see if you like it. We believe you will. It's at commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O, and thank you. All right, coming up in just a few minutes, more of Kim's conversation with Rob and Melissa Stephenson, the flea market flippers, including what's the importance of eBay ratings and what kind of commercial equipment do they actually sell? They'll get into the specifics. Plus, they offer a class on doing this kind of flipping, and we'll tell you more about that next on Commando On Demand Insider. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely.
Welcome back to Commando on Demand Insider and Kim's conversation with the flea market flippers, Rob and Melissa Stephenson of Winter Garden, Florida. Back to it. Here's Kim. So if somebody's getting into flipping for the first time and you guys have had such phenomenal success, um, what's what's like your first words of advice for them? Um, one of the things that we like to tell people to start with is um, going through their house and just to go through and look for stuff that you have. So many people are, have already been decluttering through this whole pandemic um, and get started with that because then you can kind of get a feel for it, get a feel for selling on your local apps or selling on eBay. A lot of people are afraid of eBay at first. Or they're afraid of the shipping or just the whole process. So if you start with your own stuff that you can, you know, you don't really care what you get for it as much because you haven't invested anything in it or you're just going to uh, donate it anyway, um, then you can get through some of those first uh, fears and gain confidence and grow from there. Yeah, it's the learning process. It really will help you with the whole process and get confidence in the process and get better at the, co- the process. So when you are investing into something, you have a better understanding of how the whole process works and, and what to expect. And we never recommend people invest a lot of money either. Like we're very comfortable at finding items in the trash or, you know, finding free items on the app and not even spending, you know, like spending five, 10, 20 bucks on, on things that to sell. So when you're on eBay, talk a little bit about the importance of and how you keep good ratings, because that's paramount when you're setting up an eBay business. Yes, your ratings, your uh, feedback are, I mean, that's everything with eBay. That shows um, the buyers, the potential buyers, that you are who you say you are, that you've completed good listings um, and good standing. So that is everything. So we tell everybody, you know, it's huge that you keep the buyers happy with what you're doing. But the other huge part is that buyers don't have unrealistic expectations of the item. When I started this business 16 years ago, when I bought something new and went to resell it, I had a different opinion of that item being in great condition versus when the buyer got it and they're like, okay, it's in okay condition. It's not in mint condition like you thought it was. So I've learned throughout the years, listen, you want to under promise and over deliver with this business than the opposite. So when a buyer gets your item, you want to say, you know, this item might have scratches, scuffs, scrapes. You might give them realistic expectations to when they get the item, they're super thrilled that it's in way better condition than they originally assumed. And that's how you get positive feedback. You know, that's really, that's really true is that you, if you set the bar and if you exceed the bar, then they're going to be just thrilled that, that, wow, you know what? This really isn't that bad. It's actually good. Um, So what kind of goods and services sell quickly the most? I know you mentioned like this ice cream that, you know, you have to have a unique buyer for that. But are there things like like a, a Prada bag or Gucci shoes or because I know that's really big with uh, with, you know, the younger generations now? We don't really sell a lot of like clothes or bags or kind of more of the, um, yeah, the, the those brand name things. We look for more. I mean, it's all random. It's all kind of all over the place. And we've kind of gotten into a niche of um, more commercial equipment. So it and I think there's not really one thing that sells faster in the stuff that we do. Yeah. Um, but if, if you're consistent with your listing and you're consistent with your, you know, finding inventory, you can keep turning it. And like the apps love the, uh, their algorithm loves consistency. So if you go and you're listing something every day, your stuff's going to get seen more to more people. And then the chances of it being sold faster are a lot higher. So you mentioned commercial equipment. Give us some examples. Um, commercial, we do a lot of commercial exercise equipment, stuff that comes out of gyms. Um, we do restaurant equipment, um, refrigerators, ice merchandisers, all that stuff. The larger stuff that people will sell for, uh, it's hard to sell, like I said, in a local market because it takes the right buyer for it. But once you put it on eBay and you're willing to ship it free, you just, you know, broaden your market from, you know, a couple, probably a couple hundred people in a local market. You just broadened your market to um, a huge amount of people that are looking for that item. And when you're willing to ship it, that even takes it to the next level because those are the people who will pay the money for it. And we've really cornered the market on shipping. We've learned how to ship freight stuff. Um, Very, very reasonable. So it's very reasonable for anybody to buy something large and then we can ship it to them. 
So what's the heaviest thing that you had to ship? Um, I would say, I'll say the largest, I'm not sure about the, it might've been the heaviest. We sold a Harley Davidson sign from a dealership. The sign was eight foot tall, four foot wide. I believe it was 10 foot long. It probably weighed in at over 1500 pounds, something like that. But we shipped that from Florida to Utah. Um, and yeah, that was probably our largest shipment to date. Uh, that we've shipped. It took you three days to make that, to build, to build the crate. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I was just going to ask that, Melissa, because <laughs> I shipped a telescope to, uh, to, I have a house in Maui, so I shipped a telescope from Phoenix to Maui. And I had to have um, a friend of mine actually build the crate <laughs> to, and then figure out how the heck we were going to get this over there without destroying the optics. Because... You know, even even if you put fragile on it, I don't think anybody really pays attention to fragile. Absolutely not. But we do notice that our freight, uh, the stuff that ships freight is handled a lot better than the stuff that goes FedEx or UPS because there's not a person that can pick it up. It's all picked up by forklifts. And so there's not never anybody that can just throw <laughs> throw your item yeah. across <laughs> the front door. Um, so it, it t- typically gets there in a lot better shape. So what do you have for sale right now that you think is going to do really well? Um, Yeah, (laughs) we just picked up something that is not listed. It will get listed this week. We purchased um, a whole bunch of LED screens from a local conference that got canceled from COVID. Um, They had to liquidate the stuff. We ended up having a connection who ended up getting possession of it. We bought it from him, and that will actually be probably our largest flip to date. We'll make the most money on that out of anything that we flipped. Um, and, yeah, that, that should be listed within the next week. I'll have it every, everything inventoried and listed. So we're excited about that. And they are LED screens to make a big, just like on the front of stages, how they have those big LED screens that are you know 10 foot tall, 18 foot long, whatever they are. Um, that's what we just recently purchased. Um, but some of our normal stuff that we have um, – what else Cook do I have? Tops. Cook tops, exercise, like air dine, exercise bikes. Um, I'm trying to think of <laughs> All your random what stuff. I have. Yeah. Um, give me one second. I'll pull it up actually and uh, give you a list of some stuff that we have on eBay right now. You don't have a Peloton, do you? I do not. We passed the Peloton up not that long ago. You did? I did. And uh, it was, I think I could have got it for $900 and we probably could have made over a thousand bucks on it. I, uh, the one that I actually found. So, um, but here's some of the stuff that I have listed right now. A Bobcat a, a excavator bucket, just a bucket of the Bobcat. Um, a Kennedy a fire main. It's a valve. Um, Windsor New Wave uh, commercial vacuum cleaner. We like the commercial stuff. Yeah, a lot commercial of stuff equipment. sells. Yeah. Um, I don't even know the name of that. It's That's like a cooktop. German, yeah, German cooktop. Um, uh, antique jack, uh, railroad jack that we we picked up. So there's no rhyme or reason what we have. It's just whatever we have found really good deals on in our local area. And then we know when we get them out to eBay, it just reaches a higher market. We're able to sell it for more money. So you're now offering a class, which I think is so smart. You guys are amazing. Such entrepreneurs, because you're always thinking of new ways that you can, you know, make money and also help people along the same way. How long is the course and how much is it? Um, the course is at, at your own pace, so it's self-paced with um, you know, text and videos, how-to videos, and we take you through every like somebody who's just starting out, never even had an eBay account or PayPal account, um, and then we go all the way up to the freight shipping. So the freight shipping isn't for everybody, but um, a lot of flippers who are currently flipping want to do the freight shipping, so it's great for them. Um, and our course right now is currently at 497 and 597 depending on if you do the freight or not. So five hundred and six hundred dollars. Yes. One of the other keys that our course does that we do um, that a lot of is is once you purchase the course, we have a Facebook group that everybody goes into. Melissa and I moderate it. We actually have a couple of moderators too that uh, answer questions. They're actually flippers. So when people are going through the course and even afterwards, they're vested into this Facebook group um, that allows them to ask continuing questions through our whole course, you know, through the course and through, you know, whatever problems they might encounter afterwards. So it's just kind of a support group. It's amazing. I mean, that's really what everybody loves is the the support group afterwards because they they can keep growing, keep learning 
and get all their questions answered uh, from not only just Melissa and I, but other flippers that are going through the same steps that they're going through. You know, and that's a big part of it is the community, right? Yep. I mean, so that you can, I always say, you can Google anything. Mm-hmm. You can Google anything, but yep. you can't Google trust and advice. Yep. Okay. It's because you, ne- you never, you don't know what somebody's hidden agenda is. And that's why these communities are so important uh, for people when they do have questions. Like we have obviously the commando community where people, if they have tech questions that I answer them and other people do, and it's inc- incredibly busy, but yet people can put a question on there and get an answer in an hour and they know that it's good. It's a good answer, right? So it's it's fabulous that you have uh, this community going. Um, you know, Rob and Melissa, thank you so much for giving us an inside look into the art of flipping and congratulations on your success. You know, fascinating stuff, inspirational for everybody. And, uh, and thank you again. Yeah, thank you, Kim. We totally appreciate having, uh, having the opportunity to talk to you and, and give some information to you. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much. So what do you think? Are you ready to start flipping for money? Go ahead and take the next step now. Learn more about how flipping's done. And what I really like is that you can get help along the way from Rob and Melissa. So I arrange for you to get $100 off their online university. But in order to get this special deal, you have to go to this address. Otherwise, you'll pay more. FleaMarketFlipper.com slash Kim. That's FleaMarketFlipper.com slash Kim. Hey, and when you are a success, drop me a note. I'd love to hear from you.